you'll hear control system engineers talk about the loop, the control loop, right? So usually when you're, you're connecting a control system up or you're doing that design, you have the intent to measure something and you have the intent to manipulate something, right? It's like the shower, right? Take a shower in the, in the uh, hotel room this morning, the water's coming out, it's too hot, you turn the valve, right? It's too cold, you turn the valve the other way. Well, you're the control system in that particular piece, right? So your skin is measuring the temperature and you're adjusting the valve. Well, that's what the control system does, right? So you have a suite of sensors on one side that are wired up to inputs into the control system. The control system is measuring voltage, current, frequency, all kinds of different electrical properties depending upon the sensor. Performing some calculations in the middle and then sending electrical signals out to what we would call final control elements, control valves, variable speed motors and pumps, um, damper positions, right? So you're moving a, a big arm on a damper to adjust the air into a boiler or something like that. That entire process is called the loop. And there's a lot of tweaking and a lot of opportunity to introduce error. There's a lot of opportunity to introduce latency or timing challenges with when the sensor is, is sending its signal versus when the actuator is uh, making its moves. And more and more of those final control elements and the sensors out in the field are becoming intelligent. Well, the corollary to that in a current loop became 4 to 20 milliamps. So in a loop, we used current because then you could detect if the wire got broken. If you used voltage and you had zero volts be the zero percent signal, if the wire got broken, the control system would just say, oh, well, it's just reading zero. In a 4 to 20 milliamp system, if the system has zero in it, it means there's a fault or a break. You can also borrow some of the power in that four milliamps to power your instrument. So most of these instruments don't have separate power supplies, right? They glean the power off of that four milliamp signal going around in the circle. So four milliamps is your zero, 20 is your 100%. And if you're a control engineer, you have, you know, 250 ohm resistors falling out of your pocket everywhere because if you run 20 milliamps through 250 ohms, you get five volts. So you get that voltage drop across that resistor that becomes your signal into your industrial control system, right?